Hello everyone, I'm Nick Reviewmx. Welcome to my channel, and you are listening to Potato Cast. So it's it's been a little while since I've done a, a proper Potato Cast. The last one I did was uh, really just an announcement video that I made to um, announce the creation of my Discord server, Nick Reviewmx is Dan. And uh, uh, in that one, because it was really just an announcement video and I wanted to, to keep it short and, and really to the point, I didn't go over questions and comments from the last one, which was actually like five months ago. So we're going to go over those before I talk about what I want to talk about today. But the first thing I have to address, well, there's two things I want to address right away. Uh, one is, actually, there's three things. There's three, two things I want to address, one, things I want to, one thing I want to acknowledge. The one thing that I want to acknowledge is you may notice that I sound a whole lot better. Uh, this audio recording is of a much better quality than normal, and I haven't changed my method nor have I changed microphones. Uh, I still have the, the blue snowball mic that Peyton got for me. But I also got a little belated Christmas present from Peyton today, which was a mic, uh, a mic stand, something I've always wanted, and I actually was planning to buy one myself before, you know, before everything went to shit. Um, so I just want to thank Peyton for that. Um, just, just really just a very Merry Christmas uh, to Peyton. Uh, even though it's it's past, I mean, well, you know, it's holidays, right? It goes on till New Year's. Uh, it's actually New Year's Eve <coughs> in just a couple hours, so there you go. But, uh, yeah, it, so now the microphone's pretty much right in front of my face where it's supposed to be, and I should sound a lot clearer and fuller, and you're actually hearing me as I sound, IRL. That's the acknowledgement. Uh, the things I want to address, one thing is that you may have been expecting the continuation of the Pokemon Go uh, go, go, listen to me, Pokemon Gold version, randomized Nuzlocke Let's Fail Challenge today, since it is Sunday, um, that's actually going to be delayed until tomorrow, um, because I'd wanted to do this video instead, and uh, it's it's getting a little late, I want to do this video, it's very important that I do this video, I want to put this up, and I, you know, t today was a, it was shit, as I'm sure you'll, you guys will all hear and, and acknowledge once I get done talking about it. But so the Pokemon Gold Run will return tomorrow. Um, no big deal. I just I haven't even made the thumbnail. It's just it's a whole thing, you know. Today was shitty, and you're about to find out why. The other thing I wanted to say is about the Discord server. Uh, yeah, and we got a lot of people on there. A lot of you guys showed up to the Discord server, and uh, it's it's been it's been great. I just want to thank you guys for coming on. I mean, we have like right now, just looking at it. Um, aside from myself and AJ, who's a mod, there's there's 15 people online right now. There's 47 other people that are not even online right now in the Discord server. Uh, the permanent link to my Discord server, the invite, which is pretty much open to everybody, uh, is is going to be in the description of this video and all my videos going forward. And I heavily suggest that if you enjoy even one of my videos that you come by and say hi. Uh, we have a really good crowd of people there. And I've been having just a load, a load of fun with it. A load of fun. It's it's really brightened up a time that for me has, has not been very bright. Uh, being the holidays, is, it's always been a rough time for me. And uh, I don't really want to get too much into to why that is. Because it's, well, you guys that, were on, that are on the Discord server kind of know why Christmas Eve in particular was a very rough for me this year. Because I, I went on there and ranted and raved about it. Uh... And uh, you guys were all very sympathetic ears to me. But I'm, I'm going to talk about what's been eating me recently and, and especially today because I had to make a very, very hard decision today and uh, basically just cut somebody out of my life that has been there for a long time. And it, it, it's, it's, it, there's no doubt about it. it it's going to affect the channel. It's going to affect everything, you know. Um, and I'll get into that. But first I want to actually do what I didn't do last time and acknowledge and answer your questions and comments from the time before that. Now, the time before that was my potato cast that where I was talking about being in a rather dark place, talking about dogs, and I also talked about, um, well, the main thing that I was ranting about, really, was actually somebody disrespecting me on a completely different Discord server. So, uh, glad I have my own now, where uh, we don't have disrespectful assholes on there. We, we haven't really had a problem at all, you know. Very, very, uh, very, very good community on the Discord server. So if you're listening to this, <clears throat> I highly suggest you you watch it. Uh, that you um, 
click that link and come on there. Uh, you're going to want to get the Discord app, though. I know that you can click it. You could you could go on Discord's website and do it through there and use like a guest account. But like you, you can't post pictures. It's it's you know it's not as good. Get the Discord app either for your phone or for your uh, PC or whatever. Or, or as I recommend doing both, and uh, you know join up. It's it's really fun. But let's uh, let's look at the uh, the comments from the time before last. So the Game Master 8 says, Hey Necro, good to hear from you again, even if most of the news is a bit bad, though I can understand if there's a lot of time between these types of videos. Yeah, it's five months later and I'm answering you. So here. Your mental and physical health is more important than YouTube, so I'm sure everyone will understand if you take some time to pull yourself together before sharing your personal life to everybody. And you shouldn't feel obligated to do something like this because if you're not comfortable with it. Well, let me tell you something right now. There's more, but I want to answer you right now. I'm not comfortable with this right now. Game Master, I'm not comfortable with doing this. I'm going to tell you straight up right now, I do not want to be doing this. But I, I want to be uploading Pokemon Gold, Randomized Nose Like Let's Fail Challenge, playing with my dog, and then going to bed. And I have to do this because of some bullshit. And you're going to hear about it, you know? But sometimes you got to do tough things and put yourself in a bad position. And sometimes it's good to get it out instead of waiting. Now, I understand what you're saying. But in this case, like, I, I feel like this has to be addressed. This video is a necessity. And I'm going to explain why. It sucks that you can't talk about Hitomi without people being ap absolute jackasses and attacking her. Yeah, that, that's, that's still going on, by the way. It also sucks that her situation has not improved all that much. Fingers crossed that things improve. I'm sure she knows that there are still many out there that are pulling for her. As for the work and home situation, it bites the job search isn't going well and adding the health issues of you and your family as well as the issues with the dogs isn't helping. Here's hoping your dad and uncle keep giving it their all and that there's hope for the dogs to get along. Um, just to answer that, my dad has gotten a little worse. I'm going to be honest with you guys on that. Um, the chemo basically stopped working. Uh, he's now on something called immunotherapy and uh, that's showing some positive results, but for a little while is a little scary. Um, you know, he's he's seeing the doctor more often. Now, they're actually going in tomorrow, which actually worries me because tomorrow is New Year's Eve, and they're going to New York City for this doctor's appointment, you know, to Manhattan, no less. And, uh, you know, <laughs> it's going to be a clusterfuck, so I hope they get out of there before it gets too crazy there because, you know, what it's like, I mean, they're not going near Times Square, but there's going to be a lot of people traveling there. Um, the, dogs, uh, the dog situation has actually gotten a little bit better. Um, Gibbs especially is showing signs that he wants to be with his brother and get along with his brother, but I don't think Gunny's ready for it. Um, last couple times they got together, uh, it wasn't too bad. You know, we were holding on to them. Gunny started showing signs of stress, so we pulled them apart. Um, you know, it, it's it's an ongoing process. My uncle uh, passed away, I'm sorry to say, uh, just a few days before, uh, before Christmas. Uh, my uncle Pete passed away uh peacefully in his sleep it was it was sort of something that you know he'd gotten a little better since the last potato cast the one that you're responding to um and we kind of thought he was out of the woods but his health had been kind of declining and and he just kind of you know slipped away in the night um and unfortunately my dad and my, my mom could not go to the funeral services because uh you know it was it was literally like a few days before christmas there, there was no way to arrange anything like that but um you know that's just you know he, he was in his 80s and uh you know it, it's just one of those things like but that that's what i wanted to update you on that let me get through the rest of your comment here as for the idiot on discord screw them it seems like just because they're they have a bit of power as a mod, they feel they can do whatever they want. Chances are their own life sucks, and this is how they get their jollies. Challenge disrespect, but don't let them get under your skin, man. Well, it, you know, disrespect is what gets them gets under my skin. It, 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 you know, and I, I don't care about not being part of the Discord anymore. As a matter of fact, I don't I don't want to be part of it. You know what I mean? After thinking about it. it there's a lot of toxic people on there. I mean, one of the, these guys is still bothering Hatomi like every day, just just you know, just just harassing her, straight up harassing her. Uh, so it, it's just not good. You know, like I'm so glad to have my own server where uh, the people are much cooler. Like, like really have had no problems. You know, like I have kicked off one person, and that was like not even related to the YouTube channel, believe it or not. Uh, so yeah. Uh, so let's uh, continue. Before wrapping up, just wanted you to know. Uh, just wanted to know what you think of speed running in games and what you think about the Battle Royale craze. I personally like seeing speedruns as I find them kind of interesting. People can absolutely break a lot of my favorite games. 
As for the Battle Royale craze with things like uh, PUBG <laughs> and Fortnite, I'm not a fan, and I think it's kind of overrated. Well, um, I'm, I'm kind of with you. Like, uh, My relationship with speedruns has kind of waxed and waned over the years. Uh, there was a point where I was very much into them, and there was a point where I was over them. Now I'm kind of into them again, but it has to be, like, I have to be in the mood to watch a speedrun, and it has to be a game that I'm somewhat familiar with, but I, I do like watching speedruns, especially to see, like, you know, um, like what kind of crazy crap can be pulled off. Uh, the Battle Royale thing, I, I just, honestly, I just don't care. It's it's a flavor of the month thing. Um, you know, uh, player unknowns Battlegrounds, Fortnite, all this bullshit, it's, it's just something that's going to be hot for, like, probably the next couple of years it's gonna make a lot of money um the thing that really bothers me is that it, in, it infected a series that i like which is call of duty call of duty this year is the first time that i'm purposefully not buying it basically out of protest because call of duty black ops 4 has no campaign mode and i'm just like what like and then when i found out that the reason that they're not putting a campaign mode in is because they want to put a battle royale in there and i'm like talk about jumping on the bandwagon and that to me is crazy because Call of Duty was never a series that chased trends. They created trends and everybody else chased them. So that just kind of bothers me that they're chasing that trend. Um, and that, especially like if they wanted to do a game like called, you know, Call of Duty Battle Royale, Call of Duty Blackout, Call of Duty um, Black Ops Battle Royale, don't call it Black Ops 4 when it's not a continuation of the first three, especially since 3 was like one of my favorite games. And he says, anyway, sorry for the long post. <laughs> Don't worry about it, dude. And again, it's good to hear that you're taking everything in stride and are trying to work with what you got. Keep on dragging, Negro, and take care. Thank you very much, Game Master. You should, if you're not on the Discord, you should pop on by. Uh, the anime fan says, hashtag potato. I felt scared with the story about your dogs because it reminded me of one of my cats, the older cat. To make the story short, because it brings some bad memories, we let him outside like normal and he never returned. I think it has been four or five years since he left. The Discord problem happened to me as well, except for the fact that the person, a.k.a. one of the mods, got defensive slash triggered on a video game I didn't like. Inst <laughs> wow. Instead of continuously gave the person my valid reasons and hearing them talk shit on my reason, I left the server. Um, sorry to hear about the cat. I mean, it, things like that happen. Um, you know, anything could have happened. Um... And you know what? Maybe you know. Maybe it wasn't the worst thing. Maybe maybe the cat just got stolen. Maybe somebody picked it up and and, and it's in a home now and it's and it's okay. You know that's possible. Um, as for the Discord thing, yeah, I mean, <laughs> wow. Uh, so they got they got really annoyed with you because you didn't like a video. Here's the thing: if you just don't like a video game and somebody starts, if somebody asks you, you know, in a in a polite way, like, oh, oh, you don't like that? Oh, what didn't you like about it? You know, and you give your reasons, and they're like, oh, okay, well, yeah. You know, that's sort of one of those things, you know, but if, if, if they're like demanding to know and, and shitting all of your reasons, you know, they're, they're just being insecure. You know, it's like when I say that I, I'm, I don't care for Earthbound, you're like, why? It's a masterpiece. And I'm like, well, it's uh, definitely not. Um, and I can sit here and point out flaws all day, but why? You know, if a person likes the game, that's, that's good for them. I'm glad they can get some enjoyment out of it. And that's basically the way I would handle it. I would have said, look, uh, I'm glad you like it. I I I just didn't get any enjoyment out of it, but I'm glad that you uh, got some enjoyment out of it because video games are supposed to be fun. It you know I, it sounds like this person's insecure or maybe they they don't like it as much as they think they do and they're trying to you know either that or just crazy fanboy. Okay, questions number one. The big question on the block is: Are you happy slash ready for the Fox Marvel properties to come home, aka making the Marvel family uh, whole again before the problem of them going almost going bankrupt in the early 90s where they sold certain rights movie the only things i know they sold to different people's studios uh that was very incoherent but i did understand what you meant um yeah i'm, I'm happy because um i mean I, i've enjoyed the x-men movies for, uh, most of them anyway there's a few that i didn't like but um you know they've mishandled uh the, the fantastic four in a, in a pretty spectacular way and i you know, Marvel and Disney have done such a such a wonderful job of the Marvel Cinematic Universe that, you know, we really want to see these characters as a part of it. You know, like, just think about it. In 10 years, we could be talking about an Avengers versus X-Men movie, you know. I mean, and that, and that could be... Really, and, and I have a confidence that they would do it really well, especially since they uh, definitely fixed the Avengers series. I mean, the first Avengers was, was okay, you know, and the second one was... 
it was okay. It was less okay, but it was still okay. The third one, you know, Infinity War was fucking great, you know, so. Uh, what's your ju- uh, thoughts on the Justice League Snyder Cut most want to see? Um, I don't think we're going to see it because I think that it's not complete enough to release a cut, you know. I think it, I, I think basically that it's it's still incomplete to the point where we, you know, we, this is this is a reason they brought Joss Whedon on. It's not just because Snyder was not there, you know what I mean? Because if if there was a viable Snyder cut, um, they they would have just had you know the editors finish the movie, but they you know they, they Joss Whedon fucked that movie up, you know what I mean? I I could see the parts where you could tell that Zach had this very this very clear plan on where to go and, and then you can see where Joss Whedon just fucked it up. I really don't like Joss Whedon as as a person, as a director, as a writer. I don't really just there's nothing about him that I like and uh having him you know kind of fuck with one of my favorite properties, the Justice League, was was, was kind of painful to watch, you know. I really you know, I didn't hate the movie, but I also was just like, oh man, this this could have been a lot better, you know, and um yeah, I hope that they uh, they they figure out what the hell they're doing because that was a mess. All right, let's see what else we got. Um, Unreal Mish says, I like your videos when I feel crappy. Symphony of the Night playthrough is pretty kick-ass. Going to download it on Xbox One today. Well, it's been five months. I hope you enjoyed it. And Aziz Light says, hashtag potato. This is the last comment here. Hey, Necro, that was a great discussion on disrespect and sticking up for yourself or people will walk all over you. My only addition... I can only control myself and my reactions, and then only barely, so I let almost nothing said bo- to me by a stranger bother me. It's great to hear that you can use these videos as a stress relief. Post them when you need to vent. Wait till you have something you're excited to talk about. There's never a rush. Reminder, sister's family. Oh, shit, right. The divorce story. I, I'm i sorry, I can't... Somebody, somebody remind me in the comments to tell it next time. Or maybe we can do a voice chat on Discord, and I'll tell you guys the story. I... I have something really, really big to talk about right now, and I'm not excited about it. That's for damn sure. But um, I, I can't right now. Man, that sucks. I, I'm so, so, so sorry that I didn't get to that, telling the story about my sister and her, her divorce and everything, because that's like really big. You know, I, I maybe I don't know. Maybe I just need to have her on here. You know, maybe she needs to come and 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 and, and do a potato cast with me and. Uh, and tell the story herself? I don't know. We'll figure something out. Well, anyway, um, yeah, let's, uh, let's talk about what happened, so. Uh, I mean, you guys kind of know what I'm getting at a little bit here due to the title of this, uh, video. But, um, I ended a friendship today, or, or, or more specifically, I, I started the process of ending a friendship last night and uh and I made it I made it official today um I don't think that it would be appropriate for me to say the person's name on here because I feel like if I did that then people are going to go cuz this is another YouTuber people are going to go seek this person out they're going to be like there's going to be, it, it's not going to be good because they're going to be like, what happened from your side? And, and I don't want it to turn this into some fucking YouTube drama shit or, or even worse, they might attack this person. And that's the last thing I want. I want this to be a clean thing, you know, where I don't have to think about it much. Unfortunately, it didn't really work out that way, at least not today. But anyway, um, there's a person on YouTube that I've known for a really, really long time. As a matter of fact, I'm actually going over to my email archive right now. I'm going to tell you exactly how long that I've known this this person. And this is a person that not only was like a, a subscriber. You know, this wasn't a subscriber. This was a friend. This was somebody that started as a subscriber. And I grew to know over a period of years, they've been on the channel. They've been in a few videos here and there. Not a lot of them, you know. It's not like Jesse or Tanya or Peyton where they did a show with me or whatever. But, you know, this is a person that, you know, once or twice has been on the channel. And um, I have 
fond memories, you know, related to this person. I really do. I just want to say that in case they're listening, I do have good memories. But there comes a time when these things have to end. And this is especially, this is painful to me. And I know this person's probably hurting too. Because from their perspective, this this came out of nowhere. You know what I mean? I've known this person since 2009. Okay? That's just about as long as I've been on YouTube. I mean, I've had the account since 2006. But I started making videos in 2008. So this is something that's been, you know, a, a friendship of nine years. And, uh, you know... I've known this person, and recently, I've come to the conclusion that either I never really knew this person, or the person I knew was long gone, and they've become something completely different. That they've they've become a person that I would not be friends with, and um, I'm trying to figure out how to give you guys as many details as I can without outright saying who it is, you know, because like I said, I really don't want any kind of fucked up drama on YouTube. It's the last thing I want. I'm on here to have fun, relieve my stress, play some cool games, meet some cool people, talk to them and make their day a little brighter, make my day a little brighter. But, um, you know, YouTube, YouTube means me actually means a lot to me. You know, I, I, I talk shit a lot, but I mean, I, I met my current girlfriend through this channel. I've met many, many close friends of mine through this channel. Um, I got my job at Kassara Studios through this channel. You know what I mean? It, there's so many things that I owe to this channel. And um, and friendships are one of them, you know? Um, anyway, this person that, you know, we became fairly, fairly close friends over a period of years. And... Uh, uh, we would talk quite often, you know, like I said, this person's been on the channel a few times, but we we talked a lot, you know, we would have long conversations on, on Messenger and Skype, calls on Skype, you know, some, some great, some great moments, but over the years, um, things got a little weird, man, I, I don't know, when I first started noticing it, it was probably about three years ago. Maybe a little more, but about three years ago, I started to notice their, their, this person's personality just shifted in a, in a really weird and very fundamental way. And um, I had to take these headphones off. I'm not listening to anything. There's no reason to have that on. They got very involved in... Uh, Gamergate, and uh, you guys who listen to Potato Cast for a long time, you know how I feel about Gamergate. You know that I am 100% against that kind of thing. And I told this person, I said, you got to stop with this Gamergate shit. There is nothing good that's going to come out of it. You're going down a very dark path. You know, and I got the same line that you get from all these Gamergate weirdos. Oh well, you know it's uh, it's about ethics in video game journalism. I'm like, no, no, it's not. You don't care about ethics in video game journalism, because it's weird that like, you know, you you only seem to pick female targets. You know, it's, isn't that strange? You know, that we're getting involved in some chick's love life or whatever. You know, it, it's just you know, like what what does this matter? Nobody cares. You know. And, and the whole Gamergate thing is just complete bullshit, and I've I've never been shy about that. And I said, don't you understand? Like, don't don't you realize what this is connected to? What the root of this is? How this started and where it's going? And it's a. I told him it's a dark path that leads straight to what I could only describe as anti-life. And I've ranted about this on Potato Cast before. I um I ranted about it when I talked about the resurgence of Nazism in the past few years. And if you don't think that the resurgence of Nazism isn't connected to Gamergate and 4chan, 
you know those those two things were, were two of key ingredients two key ingredients in everything that happened you know what i mean and it's it's nothing good it's it's terrible and i thought i got through to this person i really did i really thought that i got through to them but apparently not and it just got worse and worse and they started acting in a way that i and i'm not trying to insult the person you know i'm uh, because they might be listening they probably are listening but <laughs> they started acting creepy. That's the only way to describe it. Like the, these things started coming out of their mouth that like just like creeped me out. Um, and this is, and I was like honestly the last person to notice this shit because we hang around in the same circles. And you know, th- this person used to come to movie nights with me and AJ um, until AJ was basically like, they can't come anymore. Because they're too creepy. And we said, like, why... And and I kept hearing it from more and more people. Like, why do you hang out with this person? Not, like, hang out, like, in the physical sense. Because they live in a completely different part of the country. But why do you... Why are you connected with them? Why do you consider them a friend? Like, what is so great about them? And I'm just like, well, I just, you know, just know them for a really good time. And I'm starting to realize that this person... Who I thought was just this goofy nerd from YouTube that had a lot of things in common with me and, you know, seemed to have a a, a good heart and a, and a warm personality didn't, you know, or either did and then stopped having a warm heart and a good personality. You know, this is a person that always had some kind of joke or, or, or some kind of quip and, 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 and was fairly witty, but in a very dry way. I mean, they, their, their whole persona was very akin to my own. And, and then I see them, you know, start to act like one of those weird, creepy incel guys from Reddit, you know, and 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 start to really dive into the most disgusting parts of the internet. Some of the most vile, abhorrent filth that you can imagine. And I'm not talking about, like, you know, like pornography type of thing. You know, I'm not talking about anything illegal, If that's what you're getting at. I'm talking about just hatred feeding off of more hatred. I'm talking about the very worst that Twitter has to offer. I'm talking about basically supporting the most evil and nefarious things on the internet. And upholding them as as a moral ideal. And... The creepiness was getting to me. Like, female friends of mine were particularly grossed out by this individual. Uh, There's no other way to put it. Um, You know, like, Tanya, bless her heart, tried very hard with this person to get along with them and to think, you know, that they were okay. And, And there was a point where I had to rant about it to Tanya because, like, it was starting to get to me how so many people were saying this guy's a fucking jerk. What is wrong with you that you're friends with him? And do you, can you imagine the toll that that takes on somebody? Can you imagine trying to defend them and realize that there's nothing to defend? That's taken a huge toll on me, you guys. I, I want you to know that. And I want you to know that, you who's out there listening to this. You know, I may have blocked you, but I know you're listening. It's taken a toll on me. And eventually, you have to take stock and say it's enough is enough. And this is a thing that I've been thinking about for a while. Julie was particularly creeped out by them. This person said some very fucked up things. And and I called them out. Not Julie. I called them out because Julie doesn't have it in her to call someone out. You know what I mean? She's so timid due to the traumas in her past and she needs an ally, you know, and and who's going to be a bigger ally to her than I am? Nobody, absolutely nobody. And I told him, I said, look, you can't be saying these things because it's fucked up. And it's like, oh, well, you know, she didn't seem to think it was that bad. She said it was okay. And I said, don't you realize 
that women say these things to guys to shut them up? You know what I mean? If you've ever said something and it bothered a woman, and then they're like, oh, it's okay, it's okay. It's not okay. She's afraid of you. You know what I mean? She's worried about what you might do. That's, you know, women got it rough, man. There's no denying that women have it really rough, especially recently, because any kind of attempt that they make to be put on equal footing with us, there's this huge pushback against it. And this person sort of become part of that pushback. And you can't push back against women and then maintain friendships with women. You can't push back against LGBT people and then claim to be their friend too. And and that happened too because, well, I I don't want to get too much into it because it it had to do with Tanya and that's between her and this person. But there was a whole blow up between Tanya and this person and I had to step in and explain to this person why they were being a shithead and it's like why do I have to be that guy why do I have to constantly swoop down and tell you how to fucking act how do I have to you know like if you're going to be a disrespectful ass and then look at me and say I didn't know I was being a disrespectful ass how is that disrespectful? And then I had to sit there and painstakingly explain to you wh- that what any normal person would know is some fuck shit? That's fucked up, dude. That's fucked up. You know? So, this has been something that's been brewing for a while. They, this is a person that came to my streams rather regularly and every single time made it awkward. Especially if Julie was there. Julie would show up and they be, they became creepy. You know, like really obsessed with her. Or they would just show up to the stream and ask if Julie was there. And it's just like, oh, this is, I don't know. It, it gave me the heebie-jeebies. It certainly gave her the heebie-jeebies. It gave a lot of people the heebie-jeebies. And I got tired of fielding complaints, you know, from people that don't do fuck shit. You know what I mean? Like, if 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 you're a person that does some fuck shit, don't come and complain to me about one of my friends doing some fuck shit. Because I'll call you out on your fuck shit. But my friends don't do fuck shit. You know what I mean? So if, if, if Tanya or Julie or AJ come to me and say, this person's on some serious fuck shit. Not in those exact words. I'm paraphrasing here. I have to say, well, yeah, they are, but what, you know, I I made excuses. I said, I don't know. I think he's just got some problems. He's probably working through some shit. You know, I I kept making excuses and it's like, I'm not your daddy. I don't have to make excuses for you. You know what I mean? This is just dumb at this point. And this has been something preying on me, you know, for like a while. Um, One of the last few streams I did, this person came on and just let loose. It's just like a horrifying slur that I'm not even going to say, you know. And if you guys know that there's little that I won't say, you know what I mean? If there, there's like maybe four words in the English language that I won't say on YouTube, you know what I mean? And, and, and this was one of them, and I was just blown that they thought it was funny, you know, that they thought it was not only funny, but it was okay to say, you know what I mean? And, and I don't, you know, and then I get these people that are like, well, well, you know, freedom of speech and whatnot, you know, but, but freedom of speech, which is a very, very important value in relation to the United States of America's government and how it relates to its citizen, doesn't, has nothing to fucking do with Twitch, Okay. You can't go on Twitch, say some fuck shit, get banned, and then say, they're oppressing my freedom of speech. No, it, no, no, they're a private enterprise, and they can enforce their rules however they want to. But that's also beside the point, because freedom of speech does not mean that there are no consequences for the fuck shit that you say. When you say something fucked up, and people come down on your ass for it, you can get censured 
socially. You could lose your job. You could lose friends. You could lose future opportunities. And you could, you could even lose family members. And that's all consequences of things you said. So, you know, just because Congress can't make laws prohibited freedom of speech does not mean that you can just say whatever fuck shit you want and people got to eat it. Okay? Because people don't got to eat it. Because guess what? My freedom of speech says that I can tell you you're an asshole for saying those things. For thinking that it's okay. Just because you can. You know what I mean? There's a lot of things that I can do. Like, I could probably walk across the room right now and punch Gibbs in the head. That'd be some fucked up shit. Hi, Gibbs. How you doing, buddy? Would I do that in a million years? No. Just because I can? And that, to me, is this kind of mentality of, well, why would you say such a thing? You know what I mean? And I always ask that. Whenever a, a, a somebody who... Here comes Gibbs. He heard me say his name. Hi, puppy. I would never punch you. Good boy. You know, just because you can say something doesn't mean that it's the right thing to do. And whenever I have a friend or an acquaintance say something that is really some fuck shit, I say, like, why did you think that was okay? Like, why would you say that? And it's like, you know, usually the answer is, man, I'm sorry. You're right. That was fucked up i wasn't thinking that's the correct answer you know what i mean and then you move on from it because in the end it's not that big of a deal but when you sit there and you say well you know i can can i say that don't i have the right to say what i think and and this is the kind of mentality that this person has and it drives me up the fucking wall so this is something that i i've been waiting for an excuse this person showed up on my discord it wasn't that bad but they made it a little weird you know and you know and and this person is just so completely tone deaf cannot read a room just talks about things that just nobody fucking cares about you know what i mean and just has no social graces whatsoever and i'm thinking to myself when did this happen was it always like this or you know like was i blind to it or did it change? And I don't know. I really, really don't know. So I've been grappling with this for quite a while. Pretty much, like I said, this has been something that's been bugging me in increasing orders of magnitude for the past three years. I've known them for nine years, okay? But for one third of the period of time that I knew this person, they're bugging the shit out of me. And they're bugging the shit out of people that I love and respect, okay? So, and, and, and I just see this dark path that they went down and I keep trying to pull them away from this just hideous dark path and it's just not happening. You know, they just keep going towards the darkness. You know what I mean? It's, it's like that fucking scene in the last Jedi where, where Luke says, you went straight for the darkness. You know, like he's horrified and that's kind of like what it is. And and I feel now that they've gone so far down the path that I'm not willing to go down there and retrieve them. So last night I got a little alert on my phone and I looked at it and it was, you know, it was Twitter. Now I do not go on Twitter a lot. You guys know that I have a Twitter account. The link is in the description of all of my videos. And that I mainly made the Twitter because if you connect it to your YouTube, Twitter will automatically post your videos. And since subscriptions are meaningless, maybe people can get the videos that way. It's the same reason I made the Facebook page. It's the same reason I made the Discord server. But I don't like Twitter. You know, like there's nothing about it that I enjoy. I very rarely post anything manually. It's usually just my videos going up. Every once in a while I'll have a joke and I'll say, oh, that's tweet worthy and I'll tweet it out. I don't like to read Twitter. You know what I mean? I enjoy the act of sending out a tweet on the very rare occasions that I do it, but I don't like to read tweets. I don't, I mean, I like to read tweets from the people that I like. You know what I mean? (laughs) So then there's all these people on there that I don't like. Twitter just, bothers me on a fundamental level and it never clicked with me the way that like Facebook or Discord does or Steam for that matter and I I just you know anyway 
because I'm not on Twitter very often, my phone is sometimes like, oh, this person that you know tweeted for the first time in a while, or this person that you know retweeted this. So I got this alert that this person retweeted something, and they were they were on my mind. You know what I mean? And, I, and I'll tell you say something that might come off as slightly embarrassing, but whatever the fuck. Um, one thing that I like to do is to take really cheesy quizzes on the internet. At Armageddon time, my friend Jesse can attest to this, that we have sat there, the two of us, in a, in a Skype call, taking awful BuzzFeed quizzes and getting the results for each other and, and just just having fun with that, you know, just enjoying the goofy side of the internet for a little while. And I took one of these quizzes recently, and it was something... You know, it was something stupid. It was like, pick a bunch of Chinese food, which, you know, guys know how much I love Chinese food. Pick a bunch of Chinese food, and we'll give you a fortune cookie for 2019. And I'm like, okay, let's try it out. I don't really care about the fortune cookie, but let's uh, let's pick some Chinese food. So I go through this quiz, and then I get the fortune cookie for 2019, and it tells me that I will cut out a toxic person. And guess whose name immediately popped into my head? And I was like, you know what? I've been thinking about that. Maybe, you know, maybe not BuzzFeed, but maybe the universe is telling me it's time you know it's time it's gone on long enough i've suffered too much my friends have suffered too much everybody's just so uncomfortable and creeped out and it's it's time you know what i mean it's just it's time so i've been thinking about this like a lot and then i had this thing pop up which put it into my head and then my phone goes off ping there's a little lip 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 Oh, Twitter, so-and-so has retweeted. Oh, my God, what the fuck are they retweeted? And I looked at this person's Twitter for the first time in, like, a long-ass time. Because, like I said, I, I can really look at Twitter, you know? And it, it was horrifying. It, it was like... It was like Roseanne Barr's Twitter, only so much worse. Okay? Like, imagine Roseanne Barr's Twitter... 10 times worse. Okay, 10 times worse than that. Okay, and I liked Roseanne, by the way. I was a big fan of hers for a long time. I liked her show. It was one of my favorite sitcoms of all time. And when it came back, I fucking watched every fucking episode and ate it up. And I know that she had gone in a really weird direction mentally. She ran for president for a few times. I know she you know, kind of became, uh, very right wing, which I, you know, whatever, I, I don't begrudge her that, I mean, there's a lot of celebrities who are very, very left wing, and I, I'm not that either, and I respect both, you know, both sides to a certain extent, but she went in that really weird direction where it's like, ooh, you've gone too far, maybe come back a little, you know what I mean? Sometimes a celebrity, like, like, um, the opposite of her would be somebody like Jim Carrey, who just went like, Oh, you went like a little too far to the left. Maybe come back a little. Roseanne went a little too far to the right, but I still liked her show because it was fucking brilliant. It was a great show. And guess what? I still watched the the show without her because I I love all those actors and that family that I've been watching for forever. But I've seen her Twitter and it's 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 a fucking rat's nest, you know what I mean? And I don't know how much of it is is really her and how much of it is this persona she's created. But whatever, right? But then when you take that and you apply it to somebody that I know personally and I know is not putting out a persona because they're not that fucking creative, okay? They they don't have it in them to create a fake Twitter persona. And, and you know what I mean? They're, they're not that person. The stuff that they were retweeting, I have a lot of friends all over the political compass. I just want to say that. I have friends that are diehard Republicans. I have friends that are Trump supporters. I have friends that are straight up communists. I have friends that don't really believe in anything and don't care about politics. I have friends that are, what do they call it? The democratic socialists. I have, you know, the only thing that I can't abide that I can't get along with is the alt-right because they're the Nazis. They just came up with a different name for it. I can't abide that. And that's what I saw last night when I looked at Twitter. And um, 
I decided enough was enough. And I, I went through the process of trying to block them out completely. I just wanted a clean break. I didn't want to look at this person's name anymore. I didn't want to see their name. I don't want to think about them. And I did a shitty job because the next day I realized that I had only unfollowed them on Twitter. I had not blocked them because they sent me a message. So then I blocked them. And then they realized that I blocked them. You know? And uh, they messaged one of my friends, which was not pleasant. They tried to get a hold of me on Skype. I forgot to block them on Skype because I'd never go on Skype anymore. I, I, there's one person that I talk to on Skype, and that's Hitomi. And she's sometimes on the Discord server, so I sometimes forget to go on Skype. My Skype was not signed in. And I forgot that I have more than one Facebook account. I only block them on my personal account, not my public figure account. So I got a message on my my um, my public figure page on Facebook, and it was basically asking, "Did I block them on Twitter? Why?" So I'm going to read you my reply. And I hope that you guys uh, appreciate how hard this was for me. Because last night when I started this process, I was very... Uh, how do I describe it? Righteous, I guess? I felt righteous. I felt like this needs to be done. This has to be done. You know, fuck this guy. That's basically how I felt. You know, like, I'm done. I was angry. And then, after sleeping on it and everything, I decided to look at their Twitter to see if anything new had been posted and I really wanted to know if I did the right thing or not and I saw a few things on there that were way way worse than anything I could have expected and I knew that I did the right thing but then this all went down where they tried to get a hold of me hold on a second there's Julie So, they did get a hold of me. I didn't want that to happen. But, uh, they got a hold of me. So, they asked me, did I block them on Twitter? Why? So, I'm going to read you my response. I may cut out certain parts to as not identify the person. And, by the way, if you're out there and you're like, I figured out who it is, stay out of it, all right, please? So, um, actually, hold on a second, guys. Before I do this, I'm going to pause right here because I want to answer, answer Julie. Okay, sorry. I, just, I wanted to type to Julie without me going to click it, click it, and interrupt my podcast. So, um, I, like I said, if, if you if you like, oh, I know who it is. Well, maybe you're wrong anyway, but if you really do know, like, like just please stay out of it. It's, it's, I don't want, I, I don't want this to become a whole thing. So this is what I said. I said, okay, well, I didn't want to do this, have this conversation, answer this question, even address this at all because... All of this is very painful for me, and I felt sick about this all day, but yes, of course I did, as well as YouTube, Discord, and everything else I can think about. I didn't think about having two Facebook accounts. I guess you feel like you're owed an explanation, and since I've known you for so long, I'm going to give you one, and I only ask that you accept it. For years, I've been troubled and disturbed by the things you say online. I've tried very hard to keep this under wraps because it was just a vague feeling of unease, but it's grown more and more powerful over time. What it comes down to is, at this point, we're at two very different places, and we don't share the same values. This would be okay for a lot of people. I don't expect everyone to share my values, and I am close friends with people who have values very different from my own. But you take it to an entirely different level. We had a conversation about this years ago, when I spoke to you about the Gamergate bullshit, and how supporting it would put you on a very dark path. I warned you then because I saw what you didn't see, a pathway leading straight to what I can only describe as anti-life. It started with it's about ethics and video game journalism, which was bullshit then and is bullshit now, but it always ends with something evil. I told you that it was connected to the alt-right, which is just a word for modern-day Nazis. I thought I got through to you, but apparently not. I saw the dissent continue, the comments about women, both real and fictional, the way you would just throw around hurtful words and think nothing of it. I'm going to skip the next part because it contains that slur that I mentioned and it pretty much identifies who he is. So I'm skipping about 
two sentences there. You posted that horrifying article to Tanya's Facebook without thinking about the effect it might have and completely alienated her. And when she reacted negatively and asked that you leave her be, and you press the issue, she can't even say no to you doing this and be respected. You had to push further, and it made her very, very upset. For a long time, I have felt weakened by the connection I have to you, because every time I show, you show up in mixed company, I have to hear it from, from different people. What the fuck is with that guy? He's creepy, or a variation of that. My two best friends and my girlfriend have been very curious as to why I maintain any kind of connection with you, and I found that a harder question to answer. This has been something weighing heavily on my mind, and I suppose if such a thing exists, my soul, for a long time, but especially this past year. Last night, I saw your hand, Twitter handler. Wow, I can't even talk, say that. Twitter handle pop up on my phone because of something you retweeted, and I was completely horrified by it. I decided to look at your Twitter, and I saw what I can only describe as a cauldron of hate. Every post is something that makes me ill to look at. The retweets are worse. I see hatred and disrespect towards women, minorities, and even just people with a different political compass than you. And no, it isn't solely a political thing. I have myself have some conservative values, and many of my friends do, such as I'm going to skip over that person's name, who can come off as a lunatic on social media, but when I speak to that person, I see the warm heart and the good soul within. When I talk to you, I see a void waiting to be filled, and you're filling it with negativity and hatred. I mold over the thought of cutting you off completely and whether this is the right thing to do. Today I saw you using the death of a journalist as an excuse to attack someone else. I'm going to skip over a slight part where I go into detail about that because it's fucking horrifying and you guys don't need to hear it. That's fucked up. This girl is dead. How do you think she would feel about that or her family would feel about that? To have her death used as a sick political tool to belittle the person who already... I can't say that part. All right. I saw this and I knew I made the right decision. So there's the answer, and I'm sure it's one you don't want to hear, but it's the truth. At times I feel like you're a ticking time bomb. You went down a dark path. I've tried many, many times to try to get you off of that path, and either I failed or you're just committed to it. I really hope that you fill that void and come up with a personality that isn't just parroting bullcrap from the internet. I hope you become the warm, friendly guy I once knew you as, and if you think this is easy on me and that I'm not super upset about this, please know that you're wrong, and this fucking hurts. But I can't have this in my life at this time. I've thought about too much, I've been through too much, and I've changed on fundamental levels that I didn't even know was possible, and I found myself in what I feel is a much more wise state. And as much as it hurts me to do this to anyone, I have to for my own mental health. I hope that if you don't agree with any of this, you at least respect it. And of course, he saw it. I didn't get any answer. I, you know, hold on a second. I got to type to uh, Julie again real quick. All right. So that was my answer. And that basically sums up everything that I've said. And what it basically comes down to is this is tough because I feel like this person might even be dangerous in a way it's, it's a feeling that i've had for a while and i really really fucking hope that i'm wrong i mean yeah it's just it, it's just a fail it's 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 a massive fail and uh i i just like i said i i know this is going to cause problems you know i don't know what they're going to do i don't know if they're going to contact people that I know, I don't know if they're going to harass people that I don't, I don't know if, I don't know if they're hurt, you know, and I really, really hope that they're not, you know what I mean, I, I, I don't want to hurt anybody, the last thing I wanted was to hurt this person, because I feel like, on some level, they must have been hurt, you know what I mean, they, they, they to, to wind up like this, they must have been hurt on some fundamental fucked up level that I'm not aware of. And I'm not trying to add to that. I'm not trying to fuel their bullshit. I'm not trying to make things worse in their life. And I'm not trying to cause them to do anything that would be harmful to themselves or to anybody else. That's not my goal. My goal is self-preservation at this point. I'm just trying to cut out a toxic part of my life. 
And sometimes you have to do that. And let me tell you guys, it fucking hurts. I mean, it's it's like in a movie where they have to cut off a gangrenous toe and you know it's going to fucking hurt, right? <laughs> but you have to do it, you know? And that's what this felt like. Last night I felt like this was so right. And then today I felt like I know I did the right thing. But I still feel like a shithead. I still feel like I abandoned my friend and just left him hanging out to dry, you know what I mean? And uh, Tanya was very supportive. By the way, I just want to shout out to her. She was extremely supportive. and I was basically talking to her all throughout all this. And, you know, she told me that, you know, you're doing the right thing and... Um, you know, it wouldn't hurt if you weren't a compassionate person, which I, you know, meant a lot to me. Uh, another person that was extremely um, supportive is AJ, because of course he is. Um, AJ's always been there for me. Um, Armageddon time, my friend Jesse um, actually did the same thing in solidarity with me. Um, I showed him what I was upset about. I showed him the tweets and. He was his reaction was exactly the same as mine, and he was like, "Nope, that's out of my life forever." Of course, they you know they never really had a close relationship, so it wasn't any kind of emotional impact for Jesse. But um, I was glad he did that too because I felt like you know I wasn't alone, you know. And um, I mean, everybody else that I mentioned, like AJ and Tanya, had already cut this person out anyway um also um barrel um you, you guys probably know him as poof nisse on youtube but um I, t- I had a nice chat with barrel today earlier he like prefers to be called barrel now his name's really axel um had a really nice conversation with him today where i told him because he's been around forever you know he's been i've been friends with him forever and um i told him you know everything that happened and he was you know, like, wow, you know, that is fucked up, and, you know, and, and he was very supportive as well, so just, like, to everybody that supported me, Payton, um, never really talked about this with Payton, because it's not relevant, but Payton's just been a wonderful friend recently, I mean, you know, he's there, you know, and, and, and this is a guy that, Payton is a guy that always, uh, can either make me smile, or aggravate the shit out of me, And he knows, he knows the buttons to push, and he does it on purpose, but it's all kind of lighthearted fun. And he knows if I say, okay, that's it, you gone enough, and he knows when to back off. And I just want to say that, you know, Peyton, you've been been really great, too. Um, Anybody else I want to mention? Hmm. I mean, of course, Julie. You know, I'm talking to her right now. Uh, But I want to let you guys know that um, if you're ever in this situation where you have a toxic person in your life or a person that just became toxic and you find it really hard to cut them out, you know, I guess I'll just kind of say what Tanya said. If it's the right thing to do, but you're finding it hard, you're only finding it hard because you're a good person and you don't want to hurt that person. I don't want to hurt anybody. I really don't. There's nobody on this planet that I would like to hurt. I'll be honest with you guys. I may talk some shit sometimes. I really I really do talk some shit, too. You know, I'll talk about how I want to, you know, Logan Paul to fall down a flight of stairs, you know. But if I said that, if I sat there and I said, man, it would be great if Logan Paul fell down a flight of stairs. And then I opened up my phone the next morning and there was a news alert that says, uh, YouTuber Logan Paul fell down a flight of stairs. I'd be like, shit, I'm an asshole. You know what I mean? Like, like I don't like him. I still wouldn't like him. I still think he's a shithead. But, you know, uh, maybe he even deserves to fall down a flight of stairs. But I don't want to make it happen. I'm not going to push someone down a flight of stairs. Uh, you know, I'm just, I don't know. I, I, uh, I'm not a pacifist, you guys. I'm not a, a pushover. I'm not someone who you can just fuck with and I'll just roll over. But I, generally speaking, wish peace upon people. You know what I mean? I uh, When I see somebody who's full of horrible hatred and 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 their and their their mind is just a, a a wasp's nest of hatred and insanity and and just a snarled mess of 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 anger and 
and, and just negative emotions. I I want that person to be better. I want them to be at peace. I want them to just be away from whatever negative influence turned them into a shithead. You know, a world without shitheads is probably an, a, a, an impossibility, okay? Because there's always going to be a shithead. But um, I think that happy people tend not to be shitheads. I think that people are shitheads because they're not happy. And to this person out there that's listening, I hope you find happiness. I really do. And maybe one day we could talk again. And we could um, catch up and look back on this like a rough patch. You know what I mean? And I hope that you find whatever it is that you're lacking in your life. But unfortunately, I can't be a part of it right now because... I got my own shit going on, and I have too many people in my life that are positive for, to keep around the negative. You know what I mean? It, I'm not at a lack of friends here where I got to keep negative people around just because there's nobody else. You know what I mean? That's not a thing for me. And it amazes me that I waited this long. It really does. And I feel bad. I really do. I'm going to stop right here. Leave me some comments. Hopefully something positive. Um, if you do know who the person is, I, um, well, I don't know what to say. Like I said, if you know who it is, all I ask is that you don't harass them. Don't continue the situation. I would like for it to be over. You know what I mean? Is a possibility at some point in the future to revisit this and to see if this person has become better and and stopped with the fuck shit. But right now, I would like it to just be over. I would really, really, really appreciate it if this was the last word. So, see you guys.